a game that all of us were looking forward to with great anticipation because of the significance of this game. Two fantastic football teams and all that's on the line, all the stakes, and they're understood because sports are important. And then suddenly they're not at all. Uh, the game starts with a Cincinnati touchdown. Buffalo gets a field goal, and then as Cincinnati is driving with the football for the second time, DeMar Hamlin, a second-year safety out of Pittsburgh, tackles T. Higgins, and he collapsed back to the turf, and the reaction of the players on the field was all you needed to see. And immediately, there was a television feed that we have access to that's the same feed as the Monday Night Football crew has. And as I noticed the urgency with which the medical personnel were moving, it was very concerning because it was clear from their reaction that this situation was dire and that Hamlin was in distress. And as you see, those are hard to look at, man. Um, Stefan Diggs in tears as he sees his teammate on the field being tended to and uh, as reports have been given throughout this hour and change since this injury, CPR administered on the field, as Joe Buck just recently has shared with us, Hamlin is in critical condition. You see the prayers, and we join them in lifting up this young man's name in prayer in the hopes that uh, hopefully there's better news to come here very, very soon. Ryan Clark is with us. And Ryan, uh, this, is, this is as heavy as it gets. Yeah. Uh, this was a night we look forward to. Mm -hmm. uh, and now here we sit. And I just ask, as a member of this brotherhood, as a, as a guy who dealt with his own health issues and scares, uh, what words can we even put to this? What, what would you I share? The, I think the, the first thing, this is, this, um, this is about DeMar Hamlin. Mm -hmm. And um, it's about a young man at 24 years old that was living his dream, that a few hours ago was getting ready to play the biggest game of his NFL career, and there's probably nowhere else in the world he wanted to be. And now he fights for his life. And when DeMar Hamlin falls to the turf and when you see the medical staff rush to the field and both teams are on the field, you realize this isn't normal. You realize this isn't just football. And so many times in this game and in our job as well, we use the cliches, you know, I'm ready to die for this. I'm willing to give my life for this. It's, it's time to go to war. And I think sometimes we use those things so much, we forget that part of living this dream is putting your life at risk. And tonight, you know, we got to see a side of football that is extremely ugly, a side of football that no one ever, that side of football that no one ever wants to see mm -hmm. or never wants to admit exists. When you see both teams on the field crying in that way, your first thought is DeMar Hamlin. Yep. The second thought is his family. And this isn't about a football player, right? This is about a human. This is about a brother. This is about a son. This is about a friend. This is about someone who is loved by so many that you have to watch go through this. I, um, I dealt with this before. And I watched my teammates for days come to my hospital bed and just cry. I had them call me and tell me that they didn't think I was going to make it. And now this team has to deal with that and they have no answers. Mm -hmm. And so the next time I think that we get upset at our favorite fantasy player <laughs> or we're, we're upset that the, the guy on our team doesn't make the play and we're saying he's worthless and we're saying you get to make all this money, we should remember that these men are putting their lives on the line to live their dream. And tonight, DeMar Hamlin's dream became a nightmare for not only himself, but his family and his entire team. And there is a tendency and a, uh, in, the, in the world and the space that we occupy where everyone wants to know everything immediately. And I understand it because I'm, we're all part of it. Do you want to know? You want to know. And you want to share what you know. And I think that the search for the answers at the moment is ongoing. And so all we can deal with at 1014 Eastern time is what we know. Uh, and we know that uh, DeMar Hamlin fell to the ground. They suspended the game. He was taken by hospital at 925 Eastern time to university, uh, the University of Cincinnati's medical center. And that's what we know at this moment. And I welcome in Lisa Salters now, uh, who has been covering uh, as best as she or anyone could 
the events at the stadium as these uh, determinations were made that this game would be suspended. And, and Lisa, we've all been lucky, right, to do this, to make this our life, to do, to do something we love, to cover games that mean so much. Uh, I, I can't recall an evening quite like this, and I just wonder first, as a human being, whose job it is to document these games, how, how you would describe what this last hour and a half has been like. It's hard uh, because, like you guys have said, this is, a, this is a human being. And all you can really think about is, you know, I hope, I hope that guy is okay. We, we've seen players go down with head injuries before. And uh, as horrible as that may sound, we've grown accustomed to it, seeing guys take hard hits, uh, see them stay down for a little while, get back up, give the thumbs up. And, mm -hmm. and that's all we were all hoping for was that that DeMar Hamlin was going to get up and that he was going to get on in that ambulance. He was going to give us a thumbs up and we were all going to know that he was OK. And, and, and when that didn't happen, I think this entire stadium was just devastated. I mean, I mean, right now, all I can really think about is is that player, his teammates, just seeing the agony on their faces, the concern on their faces. They're scared for him right now and they should mm. be. Uh, we all should be. Uh, but to see them hugging each other, uh, down on their knees, praying for him, his coach, the other team, their head coach, those players, uh, just to see how much unity and, and just unified concern that they all had for this young man. Um, it's been overwhelming. There's a pall over the stadium right now. Uh, like you said, Scott, you come to work. We're expecting to see the game of the season. Uh, and what we got was so terrible but that doesn't really matter all that really matters is uh, is Damar Hamlin and his family and we just can't say it enough that we hope that he's okay agreed as you said and I echoed the thoughts in the start you, you all you can do is lift him, him up in prayer and we continue to do so uh, as I said a moment ago Lisa and I realize you're there on the field we have access to all the different feeds uh, here that you all have for the Monday night football broadcast and and as I looked it struck me that there was an urgency with which the medical personnel were moving that was atypical, and that was so concerning right. because it's their job to know, is someone hurt or injured? In this case, is someone in distress? And I wonder if you just, as you replay what was happening, what was your sense of uh, how dire the circumstances were? Yeah, it was when all of the players came out onto the field and took a knee, uh, the entire Bills bench emptied and was out on the field and the way that the players all of the players the Bills and the Bengals the way they formed a human wall around DeMar Hamlin that that let me know there that this was not uh, just another injury that there, there was there were things going on mm -hmm. uh, behind that human wall that we shouldn't be seeing they were trying to respect that young man's privacy and rightfully so. Uh, so that was when I realized uh, immediately that this was not just another injury, that this was something very, very serious. I have an appreciation for the fact that there's so much going on here that, that initially there was a sense that maybe they'd take five minutes and get loose and play. And, I, and as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking there's no possible way that that's going to happen. And it seems to me, Lisa, that it was Taylor and McDermott and their respective mm -hmm. players who essentially said, threw up their hands and said, no, we're not. We're not playing football in five minutes. And again, that's, I, I could be entirely wrong, but that was the sense I got as I watched. Is that, was that the, what you felt was happening? Well, initially, like you said, it, it seemed as if uh, the players were just going to take some time and to, to process this and to, to try to regroup uh, and refocus. Uh, I saw Stefan Diggs. Well, first we saw Sean McDermott call his team together. Right. Uh, that the Bills all got down on a knee, uh, and we don't know what he said to them, but it appeared as if he was trying to to to, to refocus his team. Uh, and then Stefan Diggs did the same thing. He was yelling, "Guys, come on, come on, come on, come on!" Uh, because players were just sitting on the bench, just looking completely shell shocked and and devastated, uh, and rightfully so. Uh, but all of the team got together uh, on the Bills' sideline. Stephon Diggs, I could hear him rallying the troops. I could he hear him encouraging them, telling them that we get, let's go, let's go, let's refocus. 
Uh, but then after that, the players just kind of went back to what they were doing before, which was uh, to be emotionally distraught. Players went back to the bench. Uh, they went back to hugging each other. We, they went back to taking their knees uh, to their knee. Uh, some guys had towels on their faces, and they were just openly sobbing uh, into their towels. So uh, at that point, uh, it, it started to become clear that this is not something that these, these players are going to get over. They're not going to be wanting to play another down anytime soon. Nor should they, frankly, be, be asked to do so, in, in my estimation, because I, I think it's, it's understandable that the way these, these men are wired in the arena to compete, and you get it, that people get injured. And that's part, an unfortunate part of the, of the game. But this clearly was different than that. And so as, as perhaps the, you know, the fire and brimstone speech loses its impact, the idea that we're going to continue this game, no, we're not. We're not going to do that. And so I, I appreciate whatever happened between those coaches and those players because there was clearly such respect and such unity on both sides together that, that what matters right now is not this game, which mattered so much at 8.30 Eastern time. And so the, the, I, you were doing such a great job giving the perspective uh, in the tunnel of the conversations that were going on. At, at what point, Lisa, did you sense that this, this game tonight uh, is going to pause while the hopes and the attentions of everybody is on this young man? Well, when the officials came back to the Bills locker room uh, and Sean McDermott came out and spoke to the officials, and then Zach Taylor came from the Bills locker room, came to the Bills uh, locker room and, and met with officials as well. Uh, that's when I first started to sense that they're not going to.